What's up, internet? Napansin mo ba, regardless of whatever tech channel you watch, parang pare-pareho lang yung sinasabi nila, yung advice nila, pare-pareho lang din. Today, it's bottlenecks. There's a bottleneck on the new to a CPU bottleneck. Bottlenecking. For example, don't ever, 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 ever use a generic PSU. Make sure na hindi bottleneck yung system mo. 8GB of VRAM is just not enough for modern gaming. Those kind of concepts, yung mga advice na yun, palagi mong naririnig regardless of whatever tech channel you like watching. Getting rid of that pesky watermark by obtaining an original and discounted Windows product key from our sponsor, CD Key Offer. Step 1. Click on the link in our video description corresponding to the version of Windows you want. I'll select Windows 10 Pro. Step 2. Make an account with CD Key Offer. Step 3. Add to cart. Use our discount code HS20 and you'll receive a 25% discount. Pasingit muna, Rafael. I just wanted people to know this also works for Windows 11. But for this video, I thought we'd do something different and I won't be parroting that advice. For this video, these are some of the concepts that I think medyo mali yung conventional advice. So I'm sticking my neck out here. I'm saying that I don't agree with some of the things that usually get said about tech. So be kind in the comments, but hear me out. This is why I think some very popular tech advice is wrong. The first advice you always hear is don't ever get a generic PSU. Kung bumigay yung PSU, baka madali pa yung buong computer mo or yung ibang components niya. So yung common advice ng mga tech enthusiasts is that you always get a branded PSU. Branded kasi, marcha-check mo yung reviews online kung anong rating nila sa iba't ibang lists of PSUs. Plus may track record na yung brand if they're known for their quality. And usually yung branded may 80 plus rating. That's a rating for efficiency. But at the same time, para makamit niya yung 80 plus rating na yan, siguro naman may konting quality at least yung mga components sa loob. So the general advice always is never get a generic PSU. Yung mga generic PSUs usually kasama sa case, very cheap, plus you don't know what brand they are. And since you don't know the brand, you can't research kung okay ba sila. But I don't agree with that advice all the time. Because depending on your computer, you might not need an expensive, fancy, fully modular, branded PSU. Kung yung computer mo lang naman is for the office, basic surfing, basic word editing, basic social media, those activities don't put a lot of stress on the PSU. Kaya okay lang kung generic. And we've had customers in the past buy bulk orders for their business. And we advise them that to save money, a generic PSU is fine, and years later, walang problema. So that advice na palaging kailangan branded PSU, medyo elitista yung point of view nun. Kasi niya-assume niya yung computer mo, yung rig mo, pang gaming, pang editing, yung mga high-level things that require a lot of power from the PSU, put a lot of strain on the PSU. But really, for a lot of people, the everyday work of computer is very simple. Hindi na stress yung computer, Hindi na stress yung PSU, and most likely, you only need a generic PSU for that. There are a variety of payment options available. Click Pay Now, and we will finish the rest of these instructions at the latter part of our video, so stay tuned. The second advice I hear all the time from enthusiasts is bottleneck. You don't want a bottleneck on your system. Yung bottleneck is where components are waiting for each other. Let's say yung CPU mo sobrang bilis, Hinihintay niya yung results ng GPU, so naka-idle lang siya. nag ka ng pera para sa bagong mong mabilis na CPU, but you're not feeling the speed because hinihintay pa niya yung masabagal na GPU. Or vice versa. Usually, mas mabilis yung GPU, pero hindi siya makaarangkada. You can't feel its full speed because it's waiting for the results of the CPU. Yan yung bottleneck. And as I've said in a lot of videos, I don't believe in bottleneck. I believe it's a real phenomenon, it does exist, bottleneck happens, but I don't believe that you need to stress out over it. Number one, bottleneck is relative. Let's say you have the exact same system but you have two different games. It's possible that on game one, bottleneck siya, 
it's possible that on game 2, hindi siya bottleneck. Even in the same game, it can be bottleneck depending on the settings and the resolution that you're playing the game on. So, ang dami nagtatanong sa shop, gusto ko ng build na hindi bottleneck. Pero impossible sagutin yun. Bottleneck is a moving target. Nagbabago yan depending on the software that you're running. Number two, if you're into gaming, you probably want a bottleneck. Or you want to get a better GPU than your CPU because a lot of the modern games rely a lot on the GPU. Okay lang na OP yung GPU mo compared to the CPU because a lot of the work for the games, for the rendering, for the execution of the game instructions, is done by the GPU. So in a real-world setting, you can expect a bottleneck of maybe 4%, again, depending on a lot of factors. But even with that bottleneck, if you upgrade from a lower-end GPU to a higher-end GPU, same CPU, makikita mo pa rin yung performance gain nun. So we get a lot of questions. Sir, gusto ko lang palitan yung GPU ko. The common advice would be, hindi, kailangan mo rin palitan yung CPU para katapat sila, magpantay sila in terms of performance. But we say, just upgrading the GPU is fine, especially if it's for gaming. Because a lot of the games require the work of the GPU, and even if there's a bottleneck, you'll still see a lot of performance benefits. Yung mararamdaman mo, yung makikita mo talaga. Tataas yung frames per second, you can run it at better resolution. Number two, bottom line, yes, there might be a bottleneck, but even with a bottleneck, you can feel substantial gains. And the fear of a bottleneck shouldn't stop you from upgrading. And lastly, number three, on a practical level, not having a system with bottleneck is almost impossible. Sa dami ng mga components on the market, sa dami ng mga software that run on that hardware, whenever somebody tells you that they have zero bottleneck on their system, that might be true. But again, just for that particular game, just for those particular settings, and it's not a very useful standard if it's only useful for that one particular program which might even change if the drivers change. The hardware is important, but you can also get a lot of gains from the software when drivers change. So bottleneck is a moving target. Yes, it is a thing, but I don't think it should stop anyone from upgrading, and I don't think it should stop anyone from enjoying their hardware. Medyo killjoy kasi mga enthusiast. Ang daling sabihin na, oh, pangit naman ang computer mo, hindi ka nag-research, may bottleneck yan. But will it make your games faster? Yes. Will there be a slight bottleneck? Yes. But can you live with it? Most likely. And I know from personal experience, kasi yung rig ko dati, in-upgrade ko, i5-4690K, very old CPU. Yung GPU na sinalpak ko, 3080. Yes, that's a definite bottleneck. Did I see a big performance in games? Yes, I did. Did I regret having a bottleneck that big? No, I didn't because I got to play modern games on my old system with just an upgrade of the GPU. Let's finish the installation guide of your Windows product key. After you've finished paying, you'll find your Windows product key within your account profile. Go to Windows Activator, copy and paste that key in there, and you are good to go. Remember to use our discount code HS20 to get that 25% discount. Another thing we get asked often is future proofing. Kung bibili sila ng computer sa amin, future proof na bayon. Now, we have a much longer video on this where future-proof versus upgrade path and we talk about na ano ba talaga ibig sabihin ng future-proof and maybe upgrade path is the better way at looking at the longevity of your computer. If you say that something is future-proof, you're basically saying that you can look into the future and you know that whatever happens, okay pa tong rig na to. Now, it might be okay in terms na gumagana pa siya because the parts are good, quality mga brands. But to say that five years from now, I can guarantee you that this will still run all AAA games is a bit of a stretch. When you say something is future-proof, the one saying that is basically saying, I can see the future and no one can see the future. Ngayon pa lang, who would have thought that you would need 12 gigabytes of VRAM to play modern games? That wasn't a thing until it was a thing. Suddenly, people are now saying that 8 gigabytes is not just enough. But if you had gone back 5 years ago, walang nagsasabi nun na, uy, kailangan mo ng 12 gigabytes, so you should get a GPU with that amount of VRAM. When you say something is future-proof, ang ganda pakinggan. It's like an insurance against the future. Kahit ano mangyari, itong rig na to, good to for 5 years. But no one is really sure. Better to make decisions on an upgrade path based on what we know about the components today. Makanda pakinggan yung future-proof, but in practical terms, 
it's hard, almost impossible to do it correctly. And usually kung future proof, gusto mo yung sobrang bilis para lang sigurado ka na mapapatakbo mo nga yung mga software that comes down the line in the future. But that's not very useful for people that are on a budget, that want to get the best value for money, but still want a clear strategy how to upgrade their computers later on. That's why we recommend focusing on upgrade path rather than this very nebulous concept na future proof. What does that even mean? Fourth advice you hear a lot is that ITX builds are the bee's knees or sobrang ganda nila. And it's true, they are very nice to look at. It's a very distinctive kind of aesthetic that like you can just have it here in the corner of a desk rather than this monolithic big ass tower. Maganda yung ITX. Pero reality check, for most people, an ITX build probably isn't for them. Number one, mas mahal yung ITX because you need to get specialized parts which are smaller, which can fit into the smaller form factor. Pangalawa, it can be difficult to source those parts and performance might also be an issue. Sometimes you want to get a better GPU, but you just can't find one available because the smaller sized version of that GPU hindi siya available. So price is more expensive in an ITX build. Part availability is also more of a consideration in an ITX build. And three, if you're just starting in the hobby, mahirap mag-build sa ITX. Even in an MATX or ATX size cases, cable management can be a challenge. Times 10 yan sa ITX. There's very little room in an ITX build to make mistakes, to tuck away cables, to just randomly throw in some wire somewhere and say, okay na yan. Space is a premium in ITX builds and that includes the cable management where you stick particular parts like the CPU cooler. Being small brings a host of problems to an ITX build. And the last concern for ITX builds is the heat dissipation. The smaller a space is, the faster heat builds up inside it. And because ITX cases are so small, heat can build up quite quickly. So it's a challenge to ensure that your build is properly cooled. Oh, maganda tingnan yung ITX. The design of the cases usually is more innovative than the blocky MATX or ATX cases. But if you're just starting out in the hobby, ITX cases might be nice to look at, but you might want to consider an MATX or ATX build for yourself. Fifth bit of advice that I don't really agree with, everybody is agog now with the portable PC hardware. We're talking about the Steam Deck, we're talking about the ROG Ally, or the recently announced one from Lenovo. But I've never quite understood why you want to exchange the specs of your PC for something that is inherently limited. Pinagpapalit mo yung computer mo para sa hardware na masisiksik sa isang handheld. Also that you can play PC games from your bed or from your couch. The beauty of PCs, at least for me, is that they are infinitely upgradable. There are so many brands on the market, so many models, so that you can really build up your computer to be this gaming box that can give you good graphics. And when you exchange your PC for one of the PC hardware handhelds, you're losing a lot of that flexibility, you're losing a lot of that graphics and CPU power. Now, I know I'm in the minority on this. There's been a lot of hype and a lot of people are happy about it. To be honest, I haven't tried it. I don't have any of that hardware, so I haven't tried it personally. This might be sour graping, but just on a theoretical level, I don't really why you would want to play Cyberpunk from your bathroom, maglalaro ka ng Fortnite from the LRT. Conceptually, it's cool that you're able to play games on a handheld, but in terms of execution, yun nga, you probably get better graphics, better performance, better latency, better everything on a dedicated gaming rig with your monitor which can handle those refresh rates, those resolutions. Maybe I'm just being old because in my time, when you send handheld, malinaw talaga na handheld, either Game Boy or the Game Gear. And then when you got home, you could play on your fully powered console or your gaming rig. And of course, Nintendo kind of blurred that line with the Switch, which was truly portable with acceptable console level performance. But as PC gamers, we don't need to have that distinction because really, your PC can be a lot more powerful because consoles can't be upgraded, PCs can. So your PC can be a lot of a heck more powerful than whatever static hardware they have in those PC handhelds. But don't let me rain on your parade. If you do have one of those and you enjoy them, then good for you. 
I'm just saying that I can't get on that particular hype train or maybe I should try it out and I'll report back. Now I admit those last two medyo preference or taste mo na lang, but the first three bits of advice I really think should stop being repeated ad nauseum, paulit-ulit na lang. And there might be some logic into exploring whether those bits of advice are really applicable to your situation. And that's the beauty about computer hardware. Everything is so adaptable and there are options on the market so that you can really get hardware that's fit for what you need. Getting value for money without losing sight of the fact that yes, you can have an upgrade path and bagay yung mga pinipili mong parts for what you need the PC for. I think lang kasi paminsan yung ibang enthusiasts, medyo killjoy lang. They see somebody having a good time with their rig and the first thing they can think of is, ooh, bottleneck naman yan. Or they see somebody getting a good deal on an office computer and they go, wag yan, generic PSU. As with a lot of things in life, it really depends on the context. Paminsan, okay naman yung generic PSU. Paminsan, okay naman yung bottleneck. Unpopular advice, but we say it a lot here at Hardware Sugar. And it is advice that we have implemented in the past with a lot of success. Thanks for watching. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days, magkita tayo sa shop.